All right, folks, what is going on? Back with another episode. This is episode 320 of the First of Frame Rate Show. Happy Monday, happy Monday. Hopefully the weekend went well. Uh, as for me, mine went okay. And uh, let's go ahead and get right into this. Um, today we're going to be talking about Georgia Southern football. Um, haven't talked much about Georgia Southern because so much has been going on. So therefore, we haven't really gotten into it. But today we're going to uh, get into their first scrimmage of the of the year. So there's a lot of changes with Georgia Southern. We're going to talk about that, and I'm going to give you a little synopsis of what's, what's happened throughout the scrimmage. And I guess I'll close out on a little bit of miscellaneous stuff, probably talk about a little uh, Atlanta Falcons quarterback issues or whatever the case may be may come to my mind. As we go through the episode, if this is your first time here, welcome. I am VF Baller. Over here, we talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football. And like I said, uh, uh, I'm also all over the place. And when it comes to just listening to uh, just listening and watching the uh, podcast, if, if you want to watch, I'm on YouTube and Rumble. If you want to listen, I am on Anchor, Spotify, Stitcher apple and google so um you can subscribe and follow me on any of those platforms i recommend going on one more than one because you never know what happened what may happen to the one that you're using um anything could happen you know good you know something could happen with the apple whatever the case may be so it's good to just have this information at hand on all different areas uh, also if you would like to um, this channel, this channel, the, the Rumble channel, the podcast, all that is growing. And if you want to help the the growth of this uh, show, uh, you can hit any of those links down below to uh, donate. And that'll be very, very, very generous. And I really would appreciate it. Either way, if you're here listening, uh, you know, it's all good either way. So I really, really appreciate it. Thank you guys for uh, showing up and listening. All right, let's go ahead and get into this. Georgia Southern football has this first spring scrimmage to um this past saturday that was pretty cool and um everything was on the up and up it looked like the entire team has been remade for the most part you know we've always been known to have very disciplined uh very uh assignment based football where you have to run a certain way to run the football all stem from the uh the option game whether it had been under center or whether it had been uh, in the shotgun or whatever the case may be it's, it's always been discipline style football now not to say that it's not discipline now but you knew that back then you really had to pay attention to detail now you just need to learn um you need to learn your assignment and just execute and and i think that's one of the things i know that kind of sounds good going hand in hand but it, it is more in tune with today's football. And the Eagles came out and it showed you that this is what they're doing. If you've seen any of the clips that they've been doing with their seven on seven, um, I don't know if it was seven on seven, but it was more contact football, whatever the case may be. If you've seen any of the clips on Twitter, they look like a totally different team. Um, a lot of people were sitting here saying, I ain't going to say a lot of people, but a lot of people are probably used to. I'm watching Georgia Southern run the ball down people's throat and you see like one big, you know, play or whatever the case may be in, in the past practices or whatever. But when you look at what the Eagles are doing, they're doing a more traditional style football. And I mean, I'm not saying traditional style football, but I would just say more of a modern style football. Because when you think of football, you think of run and pass. But here at Georgia Southern, we weren't one of those type of schools that just we basically didn't pass the ball. You know, so um, it was mostly we ran the ball and, and it was like I said, it was discipline assignment football and it worked very well. I mean, we got six national titles out of it. We had a Sun Belt title. We ran one a few bowl games. I mean, it, it works. But the problem with that is it is kind of dated. Uh, I felt like it was dated. I don't have a problem running the option at all, but I just think that cannot be the primary. I mean, you don't go very, in my opinion, you don't go very far when you're trying to uh implement that type of offense nowadays i mean you you need a a, a certain set of players you need a certain set a type of quarterback and you need you you really just need a you just you just need a whole different type of uh, uh offense uh, offensive minded players that that we just don't have um you don't find them too much anymore um more more likely now the evolution of the of the player is more athletic and they can do a little bit of everything. And it's kind of what Coach Helton has been doing as far as recruiting people, especially on defense. 
you got guys that are on defense that could do a little bit of everything as far as playing on, on uh, in the front seven all the way to playing safety. They could do a little bit of all, all type of things. And when it comes to uh, the offense, you have quarterbacks on this team that can throw the football very well. You got running backs who are actually showing their potential now because they're not necessarily waiting for a pitch. They're they're just running the ball straight at you. Offensive linemen are moving people around now because they don't have to worry about, you know, just trying to create uh just trying to create just basic space so a player can get to the outside. They're pushing people around up front. If you're looking at any of this, this stuff looks great. Now, all four or five quarterbacks played very, fairly well, um, uh, a good bit of time throughout the scrimmage. Uh, they threw five touchdowns and only one interception. That interception came from uh, Justin Myers. He had an interception. Kudos to him showing off what he can do. Uh, Tyler Jordan, a guy that I really haven't talked about much, but he's been around Georgia Southern a, for a good little while. Um, yeah, I mean, he's been in the college football for a good little while, enrolled the uh, the the to Georgia Southern as of late um, came in uh, in the fall of 2021 he's showing that he could play some football running the ball pretty well um, had a 31 yard touchdown run and the Eagles scored on a whole bunch of other times on the ground so a few of them came in yeah, so that just shows you that they're still running the ball and they're running it very well now as far as passing like I said the quarterbacks had five touchdowns JJ McAfee had two touchdown catches and Amari Jones had eight catches so seemed like Lamari Jones is going back to his wide receiver position or he's going to be playing wide receiver because Amari Jones played a little bit of everything now also it's good to see JJ McAfee catch a couple touchdowns JJ McAfee is probably like the biggest wide receiver that we have I think he stands at like 6'4 and a little bit over 200 pounds and I know with strength and conditioning I'm pretty sure that uh he has gained some weight. So we're probably looking at a situation. I'm going to look it up right here, see if I can find it. Because I know he was already, he's at 6'3", 220. So he's already gained weight because uh, when he first came uh, from Georgia Military College, he was like 6'3", 205 or, two, uh, or 210. So he, he's gained about 15, 10 to 15 pounds. So uh, he he's already getting built up. That goes right back to what I was telling you about uh, these guys at uh, – the strength and conditioning shout out to steiner um uh coach steiner for getting these guys ready anthony beck you already know what he can do he uh had six punts averaging almost 50 yards or 48.7 yards on the punt so you already know what he's capable of i mean anthony beck is is, is one of the uh, uh one of the good ones when it comes to special teams and like i said justin myers had that one interception Coach Hilton said, today was really back and forth. I thought the offense started out really fast and made some explosive plays. We saw explosive plays all day. That's one thing that he likes to talk about. He loves explosive plays. He's talked about that ever since he walked in the door. But I told them it's all about consistency. What, it, what was nice to see for, was the explosive plays from the skilled players, and there was a number of them today. The quarterbacks did a nice job of protecting the ball with as many passes that were thrown. I thought the defense at the end stood tall from the 10-yard line and showed some toughness and physicality. Overall, it was really it was really a good day. So at the end of the day, it just seems like the offense is pretty much running the show. And I'm going to tell you why, why, why is that the case. You have to understand uh, with a guy like Cal Van Trees and you have other guys that are that are throwing the football, this is new to the Georgia Southern defense. This is very new. Um, Georgia Southern already had problems with dealing with offenses like this. We saw this from last year. So it's kind of like a trickle over from last year. So the main thing about that is with all this is going on, and also you got to understand this is a scrimmage, so you're not going 100% like you would want to because that's, those are your teammates at the end of the day. The thing about this is you they have to learn how to implement, you know, not yeah, they have to have to learn to implement the scheme that is going to be um put on to them by coach uh Harris. Now, it's going to take a little bit of time and I know it can be done because you guys have the skill to do so. The thing about that is can they are they able to catch that by the time they play Morgan State on September 3rd? I think it's it's going to be it's going to be a little bit of growing pains, but at the same time with them going through this type of offense and seeing this offense on a uh, every time they hit practice or every time when they have a scrimmage or whatever the case may be, is they're going to catch on. They're going to they're going to catch on and then with this type of offense going up against other offenses throughout the Sun Belt 
or in their non-conference games, they should be okay. What I'm really, really uh, interested to see is the people who are coming back from injury. I want to see them, how they're going to be able to step up once the summer and the uh, uh, late summer comes, when you have uh, Tyler Bride come back, when you have Canteen come back, when you have um, – uh, Najee Thompson. When you see all these guys come back, what are they going to be um like when they uh, we put injected into this defense? I think those three guys are going to be just fine. You already see guys like a Bradley Glenn is already coming back with after his injury, so he's already on. I'm pretty sure he's going to um find a way to be implemented in, into this team as well. So a lot of a lot of things are moving and shaking when you start to see why this offense is moving the way they are. You got a lot of guys on this team that are very, very skilled. Not only our defense, but any other defense is going to have a really big problem going through and try to stop this offense. You have a veteran quarterback. You got like six running backs. You got about four or five wide receivers that can get open. Um, the only thing we need to worry about is this offensive line. If these guys can protect, and if they're going to be able to throw like – um. If they're going to even throw five touchdowns in one interception, which I don't like any interceptions at all, after running 80 plays, if you get five touchdowns in 80 plays on anybody, you, you go, you're probably going to be winning the game. So uh, I, I'm, I'm very impressed on what I see here. I like what's going on here. And I think at the end of the day, I think that the I think the Eagles are, are in pretty good shape. I like what I see. I, I looked at a couple of clips that I, I saw. Also, if you see how Coach Helton is working this team, when they were um, at Eagle Creek, and the way that that he is commanding this team to do right, do better, be better, and be the best that they can be. You you cannot ask for more than that. I'm looking at this whole situation like, man, this could be the beginning of something very special. And I and I know a lot of people with all the things that's been going on. The much as we love Chad Lunsford, I love Chad Lunsford much much more. You know, good, much, much success and good luck to him down at FAU. Seems like he's having a good time. If you've seen any of his pictures, um, I, I look, I, I, I can't even be mad at that the way he is. I mean, they're like right by the beach, and I mean, what, what more could you ask for? But a lot of people was in their feelings about uh, uh, Coach Lunsford. A lot of people were former players, former alumni, uh, former alum, uh. You had a lot of people in their feelings about them, and a lot of people didn't take too kind to Coach Helton to begin with, you know. And you know, and, and and it's understandable. Things change. The people don't like change. People don't like change at all, and it's 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 really unfortunate that um, people show that side of themselves because some people are not really open to change. But at the end of the day, it's okay. We're all human, but. We also have to understand Coach Helton is here to do a job. And the only people I hear that's talking noise about it now is these people from Southern Cal who are still butthurt that he's not on the team, um, not their coach anymore. Or they're, they're mad because he didn't move USC to the standard that they are. Lincoln Riley is your coach now. Worry about him. And to be all honest, you know, USC hasn't really been prominent since the Reggie Bush days. But, you know, I'm not even going to – I don't even go down that rabbit hole. But what I will say is I like what I see here. Um, I think that we're going to be in a situation where a lot of kids are going to be successful. A lot of kids going to be going through competition. And as of right now, um, the only competition that I really have my eyes on is a quarterback competition. Um, some people have from some favorites. Uh, I'm a big fan of Cam Ransom. Cam Ransom had got some high praise by the offensive coordinator. You still got the veteran Calvin Trees. You still got some other guys that are out here that could play. I mean, you you we we got a lot going on here. So we just got to continue to watch as they prepare for the 2022 season. Um, I'm 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 here for it, and I can't wait to see what happens. All right. Let's go ahead and flip before I get out of here. I don't want to waste, you know, too much more of your time on this Monday. Um, I talked about this briefly on the um, on my uh, Patreon. And if you want to catch the, the, the extra episode I did on the Patreon, the link is down in the description. And uh, I'll be very, very brief because I don't want to talk about that in extensively. Or I'll just add another angle to it. Um, I know there are some rumors out there with... Um, 
people talking about some of my fellow uh a content creator is talking about trading for Lamar Jackson or trading for any other quarterback. Um, I don't, I don't think we need to do that. I think it's just to me, and it's, it's not a knock on them. It, it, we're, we're content creators and we have to make content to uh, pretty much have the audience think about things. Get, get get feedback from the audience, you know, and, and some people may actually believe that we should get a, a Lamar Jackson through trade because his contract talks are falling off, whatever the case may be. And I get it. You know, um, it is is it, the, the content is not always there to to make like the, the straightforward stuff. So sometimes you got to think outside the box and I'm OK with that. You know and I mean? I'm, I'm not I'm not the 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 police on what content should be made or whatever the case may be. But sometimes we have to step back and be like, all right, don't get me wrong. I understand the conversation, but I disagree. And I'm going to tell you why I disagree. And uh, like I said, I'm going to be really, really brief because I don't want to go too much further into this because I, I talked about this on my Patreon. Um, he's going to be a contract problem regardless. And uh, if you're going to go in on him, you might as well keep him. And I don't think that, um, the type of contract that he wants, it doesn't matter how much, uh, it, to me, it doesn't matter how much cap space we may have in 2023. I, I just don't see us going after a quarterback like that or any quarterback that's already here. We're better off just using that money to continue to build everything around the quarterback. than go get our quarterback that we want to build and try to win a Super Bowl off of a rookie contract. That that's just, that's just my, my opinion. Um, also the, the Deshaun Watson thing kind of ruined it for all quarterbacks that are here now, um, that Deshaun Watson, uh, contract is the reason why the Ravens aren't having good talks with Lamar Jackson to begin with. So I just wanted to put that out there and I don't want to, like, cause I don't want to go too further deep into the woods. I talked about that on my Patreon on the first and frame rate extra. If you want to check out that, uh, episode, the link is down in the description to go ahead and join the patreon for a small fee fee per month you get extra episodes of the show every sunday and i talk about um stuff that's more outside of the box that's not necessarily georgia southern and atlanta falcons football so that's basically what that's all about i may put extra stuff on there depends on how big the patreon grows but as of right now you get an extra episode over there if you decide to uh pledge on patreon and uh we will um get that rocking and rolling so that's pretty much it for this episode hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode um basically the eagles go through their first uh, spring uh practice i mean scrimmage well you can say uh practice uh, is all the same and it looked like it was a success like they did pretty good the defense mostly doesn't go as hard as the offense on on scrimmages but it's still got a lot to learn this offense is going to be very complicated to those guys especially when they're finally seeing this uh, up front it's not the same offense that they seen last year so it's going to be interesting to see how they uh continue to uh grow and uh get better um once again um if you like this content the like button and share this content uh subscribe to the youtube or rumble if you would like you can also listen to me on anchor stitcher spotify apple and google and if you want to subscribe over there that's great give me a five star rating on apple or any other ratings chart that they have on any of these other platforms um it would i would definitely be appreciated if you don't want to give me that give me some feedback let me know what i'm doing wrong over here so um i'll take that constructive criticism and get better day by day also at the end of the day if you want to uh donate you can hit all the links down in the description even the patreon like i said i do ep extra episodes of the patreon as well and uh you can uh pledge or you can donate to help this podcast and or show grow all right, y'all. I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you guys for coming through. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. You guys be easy. You guys be blessed. Peace.